right, how are you guys doing today? We are here at Nauticus, and I'm Dua, and this is Victoria. Hello. So we are sitting at our coral reef exhibit, and in here we're going to be talking especially about our hermit crabs. So Victoria, do you want to share some information about hermit crabs we have in here? Yes, of course. We have a couple different types inside of uh, this tank. Because it is so large, uh, hermit crabs are a really important part of a coral ecosystem. Uh, if you glance inside of our tank, uh, it may be a little hard to spot them because some of them are very small. Uh, we have some right here at the bottom uh, in these different shells. Uh, there's actually one behind me. And then on the actual uh, coral face itself, you have the rock face behind us, um, there's several really, really small hermit crabs called blue legged hermit crabs. Uh, they're really important to our tank because they actually eat the algae uh, and they help keep our tank nice and clean and healthy for all the different animals who live inside. Um, these different hermit crabs, um, they don't have a home of their, their own, they don't have a shell of their own, they don't make it, which is one of the things we're going to talk about with our book in a little bit. Um, they're going to find a shell that another creature has or has uh, left behind, and then they're going to move into it. So this is what a hermit crab actually looks like when it's outside of its shell. Uh, it's going to have a very soft body. Um, and only its you know, front half with its face and claws are actually going to stick out for the most part. And it'll drag that shell around with its uh, lower body inside. Uh, when our hermit crabs get bigger, just like we all grow, they grow too. Sometimes they're going to outgrow whatever shell they're in and they'll need to find a new one. So we always have new shells inside of our tank for our hermit crabs to move into if they need. Um, a really kind of cool and interesting thing about uh, some of the coral relationships that we have inside of this tank. Some of these bigger hermit crabs, if they move out of a shell and they don't find a shell that they like or they um, don't really have the energy to go find a shell, one thing hermit crabs have been seen to do inside of the wild is actually go over to anemones. And you can see we have a lot of anemones in our tank um, spread all over and they move around. They'll actually go over to those enemies and they have a bit of a symbiotic relationship with them where they'll uh, hide underneath them and kind of bury their soft lower body in the sand or substrate uh, next to or below the anemone just to rest and kind of take that as a moment to hide. Um, unfortunately, our hermit crabs are actually also known to steal food from the enemies. Sometimes they'll, they'll crawl right up and take it out of the enemy's mouth if they're, if they're hungry. So. Uh, there's about a bit of a back and forth with that relationship, but Taylor's going to read us a little something uh, about this specific hermit crab uh, finding a home. So Eric Carl dedicated a house for a hermit crab to his son, Rob, and in the dedication there's a quick little poem about hermit crabs that we're going to share. So hermit crabs live on the ocean floor. Their skin is hard except for their abdomen, which is soft. To protect this soft spot, the hermit crabs borrow a shell and make it its home. Then, only its face, feet, and claws stick out from the shell. That way, it can see, walk, and catch food. When a hermit crab is threatened, it withdraws into its shell until all the danger has passed. Thank you for joining us on this, uh, another of our virtual uh, field trips and uh, story times in one. Uh, we hope to see you back at our next one.